<sighs> welcome, welcome, welcome to day 24 of the Sunrise 30 Day Yoga Challenge for Beginners. Unleashing the magic of yoga. Today, in if you're doing this live, today is Thursday. And for this final week, from Thursday to next Wednesday, you're going to hear about um, you're going to hear about the days of the week and how and the names of our days and how they match energies of the day. Thursday is Thor's day. And the reason that I love to start things on Thursday is because it was, and I'm doing Kundalini yoga today. Today we're doing Kundalini yoga is because I learned about days of the week having a meaning and a purpose within their name in a Kundalini yoga class on a Thursday. And interestingly enough, it was very cool. I was in the first row and who was beside me? This was when I was in Los Angeles. Who was beside me but a famous movie star? And she's still famous today. And um, I felt very honored. Um, and she was, she practiced Kundalini hardcore. Um, I think she went every day. So it was very normal to see her there. But I was amazed that I ended up beside her. That was a really cool moment. Um, but it was a Thursday. It was my first day in this class. And the teacher said, today is Thursday. Today is Thor's day. Thor is the um, Celtic god for, Celtic? No. Scandinavian god for thunder and lightning when his anvil hits the rock and his, 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 excuse me, it's not an anvil, it's a hammer. When his hammer, which has a name that I can't think of right now, when that hammer hits the rock, lightning strikes and thunder rages. And that Thor's day, Thursday, is the day of things coming together, of partnership, of action. This Kundalini yoga teacher said um, the best day to get married, to harness the energy of the days of the week, the best day to get married is a Thursday because it's a day of partnership and contractual um, obligation. Obligation in a positive way, of course. If, if you see marriage positively, it's not my place to comment on that, but contractual um, arrangements. And so we're going to harness the power of Thursday, of Thor's day, of that amazing experience that I had. And we're going to do Kundalini because Kundalini is about leveraging power. The Kundalini energy is believed to be that of similar to that of a snake that is resting at the root of your spine at the bottom in the root chakra. And we want to engage it to move up, to wind up our spine all the way through the crown chakra. And so we're going to do exercises that will help activate that kundalini energy that it might rise. Our first exercise, oh yeah, of course, we need to ground and then we need to do our little warm up because even though we will be seated for most of the time today, it is so good for our bodies to, um, to get to get shaken up just a bit, right? And that's what the Fountain of Youth, the Five Tibetan Rituals will do for us. So let's ground. Oh, when I ground, what happens is that my root chakra, I'm usually sitting forward and I'm like, ah, because it's morning and I want to get into things. And I find myself leaning back, making sure that circle, that circle that makes up the beginning of your body um, between the front and back body, there's this place that is hollow um, with your bone structure, making sure that that is kissing the ground or kissing the, in contact with the things that are between you and the earth. Letting the shoulders pin towards the heart. Feeling that openness through the heart without forcing the heart out of its comfort zone. 
bringing the rest, the other chakras in alignment with the heart so that no chakra is in front of the other. Let's simply take three inhales through the nose. Inhale. Exhale out through the nose. Inhale. Exhale out through the nose. Inhale. Exhale through the mouth. And let's begin with our five Tibetan rituals. The Fountain of Youth. I think it's the Fountain of Youth because very similar to our faces, children use more of their body. And when we use our body more, then more parts get activated, get active, and it compels more use and more use. And it's a momentum that we create. And the Fountain of Youth is is opening that door. Okay, so two feet pinned to the ground, chin parallel to the floor, the gaze of the eyes goes to the ground, shoulders pinned towards the heart, um, wings, arms open out, feeling that stretch across the shoulder bone, across the shoulder blades, across the back, through the wrist, through these mildly, slightly activated fingers, Checking my radius. It's good. And let's begin. One. Turning clockwise. Two. Three. Four. Five. Bringing everything back together. Letting the spin catch you. Eyes closed. And let's go to camel. Two fingers point towards the earth, elbows yearning to be together, shoulders pinned towards the heart. Energy is moving through the tops of the feet and everything that's in contact with the earth on the legs. Let's begin. Inhale. Exhale. One. Inhale. Exhale. Two. Inhale. Exhale. Three, inhale, exhale, four, inhale, exhale, five. J, slight tension in the core. Support your back if you need to. Uh, today I'm doing the full version, which you can always do light, medium, or full. Here we go, inhale. Exhale. One. Inhale. Exhale. Two. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Five. Tabletop. Here we go. This is the first time we need to remember to use that protective grip for our fingers, which is also preparation for handstand and, and balance poses that take place, that balance on the hands. Here we go. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to the, go to the first video, the first day. You should be doing these in order, <laughs> for sure. Okay, here we go, tabletop. Inhale. Exhale, ah, seat comes through. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. That's three, inhale, exhale, four, inhale, exhale, five. Upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Again, protective grip. L eyes of the elbow facing the front short side of the mat. Let's begin. Inhale. 
Exhale. One. Like a wave rippling through that spine. Inhale to upward facing dog. Exhale. Two. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Five. Bringing everything together. Inhale, exhale on OM or uh, or voluminous exhale through the mouth. <sighs> okay, so let's get started. Let's start channeling. And I'm actually going to do this without a support. You're welcome to use a support. You know how much I love supports. I love to have my hips. I love the feeling of my hips opening. But for Kundalini, we want to be in contact as much as we can with the earth as we are helping feed the energy. We're helping our energy by being supported by the earth. And so direct contact is very useful here. We're going to start with skull shining breath, also known as breath of fire. And for breath of fire, we do this in Hatha as well. Um, we haven't done it yet here um, with any Hatha series of poses, but you can. For Breath of Fire, uh, my favorite thing, my favorite way to think about it is that you have a candle that's right in front of you and you want to blow it out. So we're going to start on the inhale and then we're going to blow out the candle and all of the breathing, just like our Ujjayi breathing, when we exhale the Belly's going to contract when we inhale, the belly's going to expand. So it's going to look like this. You're going to blow out the candle. Okay? And the consistent blowing out of the candle is going to be what gives you your momentum. And we'll start slow, we'll speed up, and then we'll slow down and then we'll stop. We're gonna do it for 30 seconds. We're going to take three rounds. Here we go. Let me get that. And inhale. Belly expands. See that candle. Exhale. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. And let's take it again. This time we're going to stay with our same posture. And remember, our shoulders are down, our spine is erect, our, our head is resting on our spine. A quick trick to help your head relax onto your spine is to do a figure eight with your nose. When I have students who are anxious, under pressure, have them do a figure eight with their nose. And it helps just get your head on itself, on the, on the spine. Okay, let's begin. We're gonna work our way into that. Take an inhale. Belly expands. See the candle and exhale. <laughs>
Wonderful, there's our second round. For our third round, we're going to go into our next pose, which is called Ego Eradicator. With Ego Eradicator, we're going to pin our shoulders towards our heart. We're going to root through those shoulders so that our arms can rise. And you know, you'll often hear me when we talk about Shavasana, I say, you can let your arms go. Um, you can let your arms go as wide as you wish, as long as they don't go above the shoulders. When things go above the shorter shoulders, we're causing stress for ourselves and we put ourselves in a state of anxiety. Well, the ego eradicator in anxiety, our brain, our mind, our ego, our mental body is going, ah, we got to do it all. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And the ego eradicator is going to make our mind very, very anxious. And then it's going to calm it down. It's essentially like the darkness before the light, like popping a balloon so that it can be deflated so that you don't have to worry about the noise. You don't have to worry about the balloon blowing up anymore. The ego eradicator is going to actually soothe our mental body, soothe our ego. So we're going to bring our hands above our head, making like a V. If this is about, if this is zero, this is 30, 45, 60. Yeah. And then um, 90 would be all the way down. So 90, um, Gosh, that's like 85, 70, 60, 45, 30, zero. Okay, so 60. My fingers, my hands are going to point up to the sky. My fingertips are going to go really strong, really tightly, reaching into, first into my palms of my hand and then stretching back. So there's a stretch moving across my arms. And I can see that it doesn't look balanced, but it is. Okay, does this? Yeah, okay, good. And my thumbs are going to point up. Shoulders down, thumbs up, and we're going to do breath of fire. Okay, we're gonna count into it. We're not gonna count into it, I'm not gonna count you into it, but let's take that inhale. 30 seconds here. And... Do you feel calmer? Bring the hands down. Hmm. And let's now go to the next pose. This is called spinal flex. For spinal flex, you're going to do cat cow. We know cat cow. Cat goes like this, and cow goes like this. With spinal eradicator, you're going to cat. Pulling back, that's your, take a guess if I'm going backwards, that's gonna be my exhale. And every time I expand, just like any yoga, it's my inhale. We're gonna take cat cow for about 30 rounds, okay? So let's, here we go, and inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. 
Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. For our next one, that was spinal flex. And interestingly enough, it really opened up a uh, injury that I haven't had in a long time. But that's what we're doing with Kundalini. We open up a lot of things that um, just can't be reached in other forms of yoga or are, access are more easily accessible through Kundalini. And as you've noticed, we haven't moved. Kundalini is happening right here. There are standing poses, and we're going to do one today. But um, the root of Kundalini, the core of it, is helping engage that spinal activity, um, that's energy through the spine, feeding the spine, nourishing the spine. Okay, let's now go to spinal grind. For spinal grind, we're going to inhale, and we're going to move in a counterclockwise circle. Start. So the breath goes inhale, and then when we go side, that's the middle of the breath. Exhale when we're backwards and go back to the side. We're going to take 30, again, 30 rounds. And I'll, I'll stay sideways so that you can see me. Okay, 15 clock, counterclockwise, 15 clockwise. Let's begin. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Try to keep the movement through the spine. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, other direction, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, 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 inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and there we are. Our next one 
is still gonna stay sideways. This is shoulder twist. We're going to do everything in, in Kundalini, you do everything between 26 and 108 times. So um, that's why you're hearing numbers like 30 happen over and over again. For shoulder twist, we're gonna put our hands on our shoulders and when we, and we're gonna twist <laughs> and our head is gonna move with our body. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna separate itself. It's gonna move with our body, okay? Eyes are open or closed. Um, I like to inhale and open my eyes, exhale, close my eyes. So when we turn to the left, we're going to exhale. Left is receiving. When we turn to the right, we're going to inhale. Inhale is um, doing. Oh, excuse me. When we turn to the left, we're going to inhale because in, left is receiving. We're going to exhale because right is giving. Now I got it. Okay. Ready? Off the plaza. Let's begin. Inhale. There's 30. Good job. Are you feeling the energy moving up? I am. Our last one of the moving poses is, you know, of our kundalini moving poses is called the frog. For frog, we're going to put our feet in a slight, we're going to have our feet parallel and we're going to walk them open, open, just a little open. Okay. So we have like a piece of pie. Okay. Not, this is not ballet, piece of pie. And it's about 45 degrees. And we're going to bring our hands to the ground, laying flat. Don't worry about the protective grip. Actually, take the protective grip. Be protective. And what we're going to do is we're going to, our head is going to stay anchored towards the ground. I mean, our, our head's going to stay low, regardless of whether we're standing or seated or moving down. And as we move down, we're going to bring our heels up like a frog rivet. Our head's going to come up. When we come back up again, pushing against the ground, our heels are going to come down and our head is going to finish that movement. You don't, your legs don't come to straight. They just come to more straight, but with still keeping that slight bend. So we're going to exhale, rivet, inhale. Mm. Let's do it the other way because we're expanding. Yes. Okay. So. It, oh, no, yes, so inhale, down, exhale, up. That's one, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Let's go faster. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, Slowing down. Mm, there we go. Well done. Okay. And for our final Kriya, 
in Kundalini, they're called Kriyas. For our final Kriya, we are at time, so we're perfectly at 30 minutes. For our final Kriya, we're going to do a grounding, anxiety fighting chant. It is Sata Nama. We talk about it in the companion book. Uh, there's a primer, there's a book that goes along with this 30-day experience that introduces you in a more in-depth way to what we're doing each day, to these different tastes that you're getting of the yoga palette, of the yoga menu. Satanama, we're gonna take our fingers and we're going to bring our first finger to our thumb, that's Sat. Sat is infinite. Our second finger to our, is that our ring finger? No, our second finger, our middle finger to our thumb. Ta, that's life. Our ring finger to our thumb, tapping it. Na, that's death. Our pinky to our thumb, ma, that's rebirth. Our pinky to our thumb, sa. Our ring finger, ta. Our middle finger, na. Our pointer finger, ma. Sa, ta, na, 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 ma. Let's take it a little faster. You do this in silence, you do this in anxiety, you do this in joy. Um, not really, someone's not gonna be skipping around going satanama. But when you feel stress, this is there for you, okay? So let's take it a little faster. Satanama, 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 satanama. Or as slow as you want. Na, ma, sa, ta, na, ma. My hands are in the air so that you can see them. You can do them with your hands anywhere. You can do them with your hands in your coat. Sa, ta, na, ma. Sa, ta, na, ma. So that is our exploration of kundalini energy. We're exploring this kundalini energy because we are in the day of power. Power is fire. There is literally, the kundalini teachers who I have worked with typically walk around with a giant binder filled with descriptions of kundalini exercises. So the it is an un, inexhaustible number of kundalini exercises. There are certain ones that are great to do for pregnancy. There are certain ones that are great to do in times of extreme, extreme stress, and they are extreme, and everything in between. So although pregnancy can be quite stressful, <laughs> um, so I invite you to go more deeply into kundalini, and um, you are getting the result of a few years. I took a nice dip in the kundalini pool for about two and a half years. And these were the highlights of that experience. And I'm happy to share them with you. We're not going to take a shavasana today because the satanama very much um, grounded us in the kundalini energy. And I would like you to walk and exit off of your mat with that energy. And so I congratulate you. You have completed day 24 and I thank you. And if you're doing this in real time or if you happen to be doing this on a Thursday or the next Thursday you get to, remember that you can leverage the baked in power of partnership contracts, getting things done, that doing nature. And I'll see you tomorrow where I will give you even more information about the power of Friday. Congratulations. Thank you for joining me. And of course, wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. Satnam Namaste.